Hello and welcome to another edition of Brothers in Law. I'm Mike Bradley and my co-host is Corey Taylor. What's going on, Corey? Oh, not much, man. I can't call it. How you doing, bro? Not too bad, man. So on this show today, we're going to talk about a prior officer-involved shooting that happened a couple of years ago. And this was in Blytheville, Blytheville, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And this is a pretty good video. I saw it uh, a little while ago. And we decided to, to talk about this on the show. So I'm going to just set this up for you a little bit. Where an officer, a female officer, she gets dispatched to a gas station where an assault had occurred. And she gets to the gas station and they give her a description of the suspect. They describe the suspect. She ultimately locates this suspect at a hotel that's like not too far from where this gas station is and she confronts the suspect and, and i'll let you take it over from there corey okay before we get into it like share and subscribe to our channel and if you like the content of this video please leave us a comment below and mike and i will respond to you before the following week to give you our opinion on your comment all right so let me go ahead and, and set this video up here Give me a quick second here. A male facial hair, all black clothing. Was it a long sleeve or short sleeve shirt? Uh oh, excuse me, hold on. Hold on. That's my fault. I gotta go to share the screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all good. No worries, man. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Um, let me go see if I can make contact with him real quick and I'll come back. So just, are you going to be here for a little bit? Okay. Um, let me go get everything real quick. Sorry. So like Mike said, she went to the gas station where assault had occurred, and now she's going over to where the suspect had went off to, and I believe it's to a hotel. Yeah. And so she's heading over there now. And that's the female officer that's involved in this, okay. this shooting here. Mm -hmm. So she's going to going over there to, to to try to see if that's where he went. With. I believe it was a hotel, if I'm not mistaken. But again, this this happened back in April of 2019. Okay. And again, a very common call for service, suspicious a, person. Did you have a black male come inside the lobby with all, nobody's just coming in like within 10 minutes? See, I don't. Oh. Now, now she sees him. Hey. Okay. See, hold on, Mike. I'm a, a couple of comments too. Go ahead. I, at, at, at this point, I'm not really sure why she pulled out her taser that quick. I mean, you can tell right here she still had quite a distance between her and 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 the subject. Now we didn't carry tasers, so I'll leave that up to you whether or not that was uh, a yeah. good idea to do or not, or should she have just waited for backup? I mean, because she's in a dark yeah. parking lot. And that's 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 part of the comment I want to make. So you, as an officer, if, if I'm dispatched to this call, it's an assault call. It's a, this, this, you know, the guy physically assaulted the reporting party, apparently. Right. Uh, so the first thing, and what they don't show on this video, is when I make contact with the reporting party, after I get all the details, the, the number one thing I really want to make sure I ask before I contact this suspect, if you will, is do they want criminal prosecution, right? Uh, a lot of times, uh, those gas station attendants, whatever happened, they 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 usually don't want criminal prosecution. Now, I don't know if that's the case in this in this right. video, okay? Right. But if that is the case, 
if they did not want criminal prosecution, I might do an area check, but I'm not necessarily going to break my neck to try to find this person if the reporting party doesn't want any criminal prosecution. You see what I'm saying? Right. Uh, now, obviously, if the reporting party does want criminal prosecution, then yeah, I'm going to try to do my best to find this person and continue with my enforcement action. That's number one. Uh, now, go ahead. Now, some would say, don't you have the obligation to still pursue this individual, regardless if the people at the gas station now we don't know who was assaulted was it an employee that was assaulted or was it a, mm -hmm. a, a customer there that was assaulted we don't know right. uh, but it doesn't the city still have the obligation to prosecute this case even though even happen. though the victim right even though the victim doesn't want to you, well you know, so so as an officer you still have to make that contact you still can make that contact, yeah. But in these times and ages, I gotta be blunt. Well, um, true. true. I'm not. I'm not going to initiate a physical altercation. Or let me rephrase that. I'm not going to initiate the probability of a physical altercation with a suspect mm. if mm. the person who called me or the victim, whoever that is, doesn't want to pursue any right. criminal charges because okay. at that point it's just like okay well why am i going to continue to investigate this if the victim themselves aren't going no, to I'm be right. cooperative to you know do what they need to do because if it's a if it's a simple assault that's a misdemeanor crime right right officers as we know officers can't make arrests on misdemeanor crimes not committed in their presence so you wouldn't be right. able to arrest that guy anyway right. without a citizen's arrest, right? Right. You, you gotta um, you gotta have a witness to it. Right. You gotta have a witness, yeah. or that victim has to be willing to sign a form. We had a form, a citizen's arrest form, saying that they are formally placing that guy under arrest. And then we as the police officers will go then go and carry out the, okay. the custody issue, right? All but right. if you have a victim that doesn't want to do that, I'm not going to invite the probability of a physical altercation with someone. Now, right. the argument comes into play where if this person goes down the road and then he causes a problem with someone else, right? Now, if you have a repeated problem like that and you're getting multiple calls on this one guy causing issues, then you might have more of an obligation now to go and pursue and find out who this guy is and what he's doing. To right. see if there's something right. else going on. Right. But if this is just yeah. one call, one call for service, that you get there and the reporting party says, Yeah, we got into an issue here. He's gone. He left. I don't want any criminal prosecution. I just want you guys to know about it. That right. that's very common okay. of a call, right? Yeah. Now I don't know if that I don't I don't know if that's what happened here. Maybe they want no. criminal prosecution. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. At which case, yeah. if they want criminal prosecution, then yes, we do need to go find this guy and carry that out, that process yes. out, right? All right. All right, let's go ahead and continue okay. this. You just assaulted somebody at Dodge Store? Go to my car. Come on. Go to my car. Go to my car. You do not come near me. Go to my car. All right, so at some point she did transition because now she, she pulled her, yeah, her service weapon out. So pa pause it for a sec. So Real quick, you got uh, our viewers might notice how she's real um, authoritative with this person. Mm -hmm. uh, some people might, you know, average citizens might argue, why you got to be so authoritative with him? You know, how can you can't just talk to him normally? Well, you have to understand the circumstance. She's contacting a suspect who was just accused of physically assaulting someone else. She's a lone female officer by herself in a, in a dark to parking talk lot. This, in, a, in a dark parking lot trying to talk and confront this suspect by herself. So, and she doesn't know if there's any weapons involved. Right. She don't know if there's any weapons. She don't know what the mental state of this person is. So she has to show some form of authoritative uh, authority, right? 
uh, right. and assert some authority over this guy to get him to do what she needs him to do. Go ahead. Right. All right, she's continuously giving him commands. And you can tell how upset she is and, and how fast that, that happened. I mean, she gave him verbal commands. Mm -hmm. Do not move. Don't come towards me. Mm -hmm. And yet he still made the aggressive move towards her. Right. Uh -huh. and, and he's just walking towards her, but right. he's still coming toward her. He's not going away from her. Right. He is coming towards a, a lone female officer who he clearly believes he can overpower if he gets right. close enough to it. Right? But Mike, you, you know the question is, but he was unarmed. Doesn't matter. And Doesn't that's, matter. That's, a, that's a question that will come up. I know. He uh, was unarmed and he was black. Yeah, yeah. That's a question that all that's gonna come into play, I'm sure. But you mm -hmm. gotta look at the circumstance. If you are a female officer alone. Alone. You, you don't know how close your cover unit is uh, to, to, to coming. You know what I'm saying? You don't know. Some some agencies, as you know, Corey, when you had a cover unit, it could take 15 minutes for your cover unit got there. In, in some it areas, could be longer. Country, yeah. Or longer, right? It could be longer, and yeah. It wouldn't have taken but a half a second for him to start running towards her. Or, or it wouldn't take much for once he gets close enough to her to grab anything out of her hand, to overpower her, to get her on the ground. He could have easily overpowered her and then done more damage. She couldn't yeah, take the could chance. Have. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so the question is, was deadly force authorized? In that situation, I can see her justifying why yeah. she used deadly force. The right. taser gave, may not have worked in such a quick... No. In a close position. Proximity me like that, yeah. yeah. The taser more than likely would not have worked. He was pretty close. He was yeah. he was a little too close uh, right. for a taser. And dr they have something called drive stun, where you put the taser right up on, on the person's body. Uh, that wouldn't have worked because he could have easily overpowered her if he's that close. She yeah. couldn't allow him to get that close. So no. her next step up would have been Deadly force, a firearm. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and as you and, said, well, you guys didn't even carry tasers, right? right? So and you got you, you got to think of of escalation of force, right? It, it happens right. so quick, right? She started out as you heard before in the beginning. She had her taser. She was going to tase him at some point, which I'm still like, I don't know why you would pull it out. You I mean you still had? It looked like 20, 30 feet still between you and him, but. I mean, she pulled out, she gave him the command to, to stop and, and to go back to the car. So that was a little bit of escalation. But she puts it up and tries to talk to him again, gives him more commands. Mm -hmm. do it. She comes to him. Hey, she gives you more verbal commands. Don't come to me. Stop. And then you see where she pulls out a service uh, weapon, mm -hmm. right? That's next. Because she, like you just said, she's probably thinking, all right, that taser ain't going to work right now. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want him to overpower me. So she's got to go one up. Even though she didn't see any weapons, that don't mean I still can't draw my service pistol. I right. don't want you to get next to me. Now I don't have to see a uh, firearm to draw my firearm or even use my firearm. Yeah. It depends on how I'm justifying the use of that firearm. It's right. not a tip for tap. And right. I think a lot it's of citizens, they, mis they misunderstand that, that an officer actually has to see you with a firearm before they in can order, shoot you. In order, right. In order, right. And, and, and that's and, and, not and always the case. Correct. It doesn't work that way. 
right? And then she's got to look too. You know, she's a female. This is a guy. He's probably big than her. Just you know, the little picture they put up on her, you can tell her frame is not that big. She's she. It, I'm assuming she's a smaller size uh, young lady, right. uh, not big, but even still, you know, he didn't look like he was a very big guy too. But he did look like he was tired taller than her so he he may have been able to overpower her right, right. she's not going to put she don't want to fight him right, right. <laughs> then why is she doing that you're going to say well why is she's doing the job well you know what that's another whole story she's she's a police officer it doesn't matter if it was a male he you know would that guy would try to would he had tried you know either one of us yeah he probably would have still yeah. try to try you know me or you because yeah. we don't know his mindset. He all right. we know he he just assaulted somebody. So now, I'm glad you said that because you said mindset. Now this something else that could come into play is what if he has some mental health issues? That's what somebody will say. What if he has some kind of mental health issues where he doesn't understand what's going on? Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, as you can see in that type of situation right here. She doesn't have time to assess if he has a mental health situation. And even right. if he did have a mental health situation, she still has to protect herself from mm -hmm. what this guy is doing. Mental right. health issue or not. You he just talked to somebody. If he's coming towards her, she don't have time to think about him, any mental health issue. Mm -hmm. She has to take action to, number one, protect herself and get this guy under control. Right. Mm -hmm. And by the way, she is by herself. She doesn't have a cover officer on scene right here. Right. And so, you know, she, she's got to keep those things in mind when you're talking about escalation of force and everything. That's how fast it happens, folks. Mm -hmm. You know, it, yeah. it's going to go boom, 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 make a decision. Right yeah. or wrong. You, you need to make a decision right now. And mm -hmm. either she's not going to go home, she's going to get her, her butt handed to her right there in that parking lot, or mm -hmm. she's going to have to stop the threat. And ultimately, this this is this decision she had to make. Now, thus far, I don't see this as a racial incident either. This isn't no, a, no, no, a, a, a black white. She didn't call him out a name. The only only color she called out was, "Hey, you in the all black?" She was wearing all black. Are you gonna say now? Oh, that's racist. Now she said because he's wearing all black. Oh, he. No, he she's you can't, like, you can't this is a racial incident. <laughs> you can't make this, this is a racial, racial incident. incident just because she's a, she's a white female and he happened to be black. Hello, he did not comply. Right, yeah. that's our whole acronym: stay right. calm. First this one up. Comply. That's that's right. This is comply. that caused what happened. Right, his action caught. She did not cause him to, to charge at her. Those are the decisions he made. That was the choice he made to, to lunge at the officer. So we're going to go ahead on and, and, and get this through here. Okay. And uh, see what else we got. So now she gets some cut. I mean, you, you hear her. I mean, that's, that's the adrenaline in her. That's that adrenaline. And yeah, we do handcuff people after we shoot them. That's what we're trained to do that. That's part yes, of the sir. procedure. You don't assume that they can't hurt you. You go ahead and you cuff them. Mm -hmm. Now, you see her adrenaline is pumping like you said. She's breathing heavy. Now, mm -hmm. you, could, you could argue that now's the time where she should start doing first days. You can evaluate yeah. him, see if he bleed now, see if there's something she could do, put it in a recovery position, right? But you gotta understand, she's just in a shooting with a guy. Her adrenaline is pumping. She probably exhausted because she was wrestling with him. Oh, on the yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Right now, I think she's doing the right thing with just making sure. Yeah. She's by herself. So it's good to just freeze everything at least until you get a cover unit. Yeah. But see, like we had talked about in one of our other videos, this is this is where once you're the officers involved, you back out, you let the other officers come back. Right. I was sorry. I was just trying to let everybody listen to what she was saying. But 
we'll stop it right here. Let me finish what I'm saying. So when he lunged at her and he he put he got her down on the ground, he actually punched her a few times in the head. Yeah, he he, he punched her twice. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. he hit her hard enough to knock her down. Right. So this is clearly right. a guy who was was trying to hurt this officer. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, and, and and maybe this is probably the reason why it didn't get the uh, national attention that all these other shootings have have received. Yeah. You know, again, we're sorry for the loss of life. I always believe that this is something that probably should not have happened. I don't know this gentleman's mindset to say that our acronym "calm" would have played a role in this, right. uh, because we don't we don't know his mindset. We he don't know if he had mental health issues. We don't he, know. He had he had to have something wrong with him. Like and, and you know, uh, a police officer is not not a doctor. I mean, was, that's not something we can just pick up on like right now. Like you know, do on the scene uh, diagnosis of, of the individual. Right. Yeah, you got some serious mental health without engaging with them and having a conversation with. Them. Obviously, he wasn't conversating with her, so she wouldn't no. be able to determine if he had mental issues but i like how the, the other officers come in they take over they started trying to provide him life and again, people don't understand also just because you have mental health issues does not always give an officer time to try to address that in this type of situation uh an officer has to continue to if he's going to arrest you He's got to arrest you, right? Whatever's going on, whether you have mental health issues or not, you can only try to talk to someone for so long before they themselves escalate the situation. When he started charging her, well, that took away any time of assessing mental health right there. She's got to take action to either protect herself and, and stay alive. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, she, she did. I think she did everything what a a reasonable officer uh would have done she had to protect herself one uh and she could not let him gain control over her because he what if he would have got her service weapon i mean he would probably would have killed her because the mm -hmm. only thing you know about this gentleman is that he assaulted somebody right and so mm -hmm. again you know it's all about that that mindset what is his mindset what is his is he going to hurt me? Well, obviously, there's that possibility because, like I said, he just assaulted someone. So, you know, he it, it didn't make national attention because I don't think it didn't meet all the checkpoints of of their narrative to make this a, one a racial issue. And you know, there's no way you can you can. Monday morning quarterback this. I mean, you I mean you could the officer safety is always paramount. I mean, could she have waited till another unit got there? Well, you know, she could have, but what if he would have kept walking? What if he would have, you know, led her off into the tree lines back up over there or set her up for an ambush? You know, do you you know, did she want to take that risk while she's, you know, you can't let him get away. Right. And that's that's the thing. We talked about that before we started the video a little earlier, but you're right. I mean, she was by herself. What are some things she could have tried differently? The only thing I'm thinking of is, depending on how far away your cover unit is, you could wait for cover. Matter of fact, let me let me back up a bit. As an officer, normal practice would be if I'm going to make contact with a suspect that had just committed some kind of violent crime. Yes, I am going to try, try to wait for cover unit. But there may be some incidents where you may not have time to wait for a cover unit before you make the initial contact with the suspect. Like this, you know, he was walking away. Yeah, she could have followed him maybe a little bit until her cover unit got there. But again, if your cover unit is 15, 20 minutes away or longer, you don't have time to wait for a cover unit. You at least have to make some kind of initial stop, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, people will look at that and say, well, she could have waited. Yeah, she could have, but you got to, at some point, you got to go ahead and, and, and at least stop the person 
mm-hmm. and tries to give commands until you're covering and it gets there. You don't go hands on. I wouldn't say you go hands on with a suspect prior to that unless the suspect does something that mm-hmm. initiates you having to go hands on. Obviously, this was clearly one of those situations where once he started advancing towards her, she kind of had no choice. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So our question to our audience tonight is, do you think this was a justified shooting? Leave us a comment below. We'd like to know what your thoughts are on this incident here. Again, this happened two years ago, back mm-hmm. on April uh, of 2019. So it did not get the the coverage as all the other police shooting incidents that, that happened. But again, I mean, these, these things happen all the time. And it, it's not about race. I, I would have to say 90, 98% of the time, these shootings do not involve race. Just based on my experience, what I've been involved in, what I've seen other officers be involved in, talking to Mike and what he's been involved in and his experience of 26 years with the law enforcement out there in California. You know, it's kind of hard to say, yeah, this was this was a racial incident. Yeah, uh, not, not, you're right. Not all of them are racially motivated. Now, you could always have the argument of, you know, you always want to have people out there who's going to believe it was racially motivated no matter what. If you have a black suspect and a white officer, they're going to just, you know, inherently believe that it was racially motivated because they feel that in some way that white officer's actions were would have been different had it been a white suspect. They're always going to throw that at you. And to be fair, I'm going to be completely... I'm going to try to be as, as as unbiased as possible here. We are giving you what we as a reasonable officer would have done in this particular situation, no matter what color they are. I'm looking at this situation, and even if it was in this officer's mind that this suspect was black, so that added some kind of threat level, if you will, right? But were her actions you know, based off of that or not, that that's what we're here to tell you. And no, my actions would have been the same way that hers would have been, no matter what color. And you have to understand, officer safety comes first. And if, if we don't keep ourselves safe, it doesn't matter what color you are, right? Right. <laughs> so right. you're right. You're right. I mean, it's the suspect's actions is what's going to drive the outcome of that police contact such as this one Definitely. yeah so the, the the remaining of this video is just really her just you know you can you can tell how upset she is i mean this is another reason why i i, I automatically rule out racism because obviously there's a part in here where she's she's asking you know if he's still alive you know, she, she didn't want to have to shoot him. So I think like you could hear it in her voice. She's like, yeah, I had no choice. I had no choice. Yeah, she had no choice. Either mm-hmm. she did what she had to do or or she was going to end up, you know, possibly being killed herself. You know, and so as law enforcement, you know, like we had said in, in, the, in the previous video, you know, we don't want to to have to use deadly force. Officer does not want to use deadly force. And and you can hear it, just hear it in her voice. You, you hear it all, all through her that it, she's, she's totally upset. She's, she's, you know, not only the adrenaline is going, but you know, you can tell she's, she's emotional about it. She's, she's mm-hmm. upset about it. Right. right. You know, that's why it towards the end too, as well, you know, they got her out of there. Right, yeah, removing yeah. the front of the scene, which is which is fine, and then it's probably protocol, which is a good thing because, you know, you 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 gotta think about the officer and in, in their emotional state right now, because like mm-hmm. I said, officers don't want to have to pull that trigger. Right. right. It, and it, again, it, and again, another situation here where you have an officer having to use a firearm without actually seeing a firearm from the other person. 
and and citizens right. should understand that it's not like this is not like t- t- like you the TV shows you see where you know suspect has a gun and they're in a firefight and they're you know that's the only time that the officer pulls his weapon and that's just not realistic and that's yeah. not true an officer does not have to physically see a firearm in a suspect's hand to and a suspect pointing a firearm at them before they can decide to use deadly force. Now, what will be interesting, Corey, is, you know, what with the laws, with them trying to change the laws and how things are, they're trying to make police officers do. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I heard somewhere, uh, one of these uh, articles where they are actually trying to make it so that an officer has to actually wait to see a firearm before they use a firearm themselves, right? Mm. That'll be interesting like this. You look at this video here with this incident, how would that come into play in this incident? What would that this officer be expected to do, right? Uh, but she, this she would have clearly got problem. her, she would have clearly got her butt handed to her. It, yeah, it, it, it became, to, I mean, he could have, so, you know, I, I guess in, in, in their eyes, y- your hands cannot be a weapon. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. I guess so, which is, which, is, which is a mistake for them to believe that, okay? In this situation, had he got his hands on her, uh, he, did, he, did, he did physically assault her a couple of times, at yeah, least he hit her twice, twice in mm-hmm. the head. You know, he could have, had he had the opportunity, he could have done more damage to her, causing mm-hmm. great bodily hint injury, if at minimum. So, you know, go ahead. I, I wish I could find that video they showed us in the academy when we were going through uh, Officer Survivor Week. And i never forget it. It was a video of a female officer stopped this, this vehicle. The guy got out, and, and clearly he was much bigger than her. And he hit her one good time and dropped her and mm-hmm. took her gun. Now, the only reason why he didn't kill her was because I think the guy, it was a daughter or girlfriend was there who grabbed him and, and pulled him away and, and they sped off. Had a girlfriend or daughter, whoever she was, went there. He would have shot and killed her. So, again, you making these laws to really, for the benefit of the criminal, <laughs> Right, you're giving the criminal the upper hand on law enforcement, and it should be the other way around. The law enforcement should have the upper hand on the criminal, because you you want to stop that. Because if they can overpower you, they, when the criminals get wind of the policies and, and new laws and things that what police officers can do and cannot do, you you have lost control of of your city. Yeah. I mean, for that, like we said, that 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 type of change in policy or law, if you will, to where you have to wait to see a firearm, that's going to put a lot of officers in, in jeopardy, too, Still, even yeah. that, because, yeah, someone can hurt you with their hands. They can knock you out and take your gun and shoot you. Yeah. They can take your taser from you and use it on you, de- incapacitating you to hurt you further. They can... It's it's almost like someone reaching into a car to grab a gun after you've told them numer to grab something that you don't know. You you have you assume it's something that they're going to use mm. to hurt you, and mm. they reach into the car and you tell them numerous times, "Don't go into the car. Don't reach for that. Don't reach for that." Do does an officer have to wait until they actually reach and grab the gun that they're going for and point it at us? By that time. Officers, the officer is shot. He's he's done at that point. He or she is done. Mm-hmm. At that point. You see what I'm saying? So I think a lot of citizens don't realize they don't look at it that way. You know, if I sat here and waited for you to grab a gun, if if you you give me every indication that you're not going to no, number one do what I'm telling you to do, and number two, this is uh, clearly a high stressful situation or a contact that I'm making with you. And number three, you are going in reaching for something after I'm telling you over and over not to reach for it. Mm-hmm. Am I really going to sit and wait for you 
to reach to see if what you're reaching for is a gun. Because if right. I do that, I may, you already got the drop on me, and I'm probably going to get shot at that point. So, mm -hmm. officers don't get paid to get shot first, okay? No. They don't get paid to get shot first. You shoot me, and I'm, I'm out of commission. How can I help anybody else? <laughs> right. You see what I'm right. So, you know, people got to look at these laws a different way. It's not as simple as I see a gun, then I shoot. You see what I'm saying? It's not mm -hmm. that simple. No. Uh, and citizens need to realize that. No, and I, I think you're right. So like, share, and subscribe to our channel if you like the content of this video. Again, the question of the night for this video is, do you think this was a justified shooting? Leave us a comment below. We love to hear your opinion on this. Again, this was a video that took place uh, a little over two years ago. Well, two years this past April of officer involved shooting. You know, we just opened a discussion, right? It wasn't justified. You know, it, it didn't get the, the, the national attention as, as some of these other shootings that have taken place over the last few years. And, you know, what we're talking about tonight, you're getting from two two former police officers and reasonable police officers that, you know, would have done the same thing because, you know, I don't care how big you are. If I tell you don't come up to, to me, don't do it. I, I'm not going to sit here and try to fight you because you got a wild hair up your ass and you want to try and come confront me on it to show me how big and bad you are. Now you're going to mm -hmm. lose that fight partner. And, and this is, this is the, this is the problem that we're having, you know, quit trying to challenge these officers just comply, answer the questions, and move on. Had he had just done those things, maybe this young man would still be here with us today. But again, we don't know what his mindset was during this whole or, or, ordeal, right? But let's just say he was in the right frame of mind. He just got into argument, whatever, at, at the gas station and, and put his hands on somebody, whatever. I mean, if he would have just talked to the officer, if he just went back to the vehicle with the officer and went back to the service station saying, you know, she would have, and I think that's where she was going, going with this, Mike, was get him back to the car, go back to the gas station, and, hey, is this the guy that assaulted you? Yes or no. And then, you know, he would, she would have asked, hey, what well, do you want to press charges probably? And I'm, yeah, I'm speculating. I mean, we, we don't know, been, but. He could have been doing it if he show up or something like that, yeah. Right. We're just basing this on if he had complied, if he, you know, were in the right frame of mind and followed through. Well, then, you know, either he would have been able to move on, which is the last letter of the acronym. Maybe if they pressed charges, he would have went on to jail for assault that night. But, you know, knowing how these laws are now, he would have been out in a couple hours, right? <laughs> and he would have been alive. Uh, right, and he would have been alive. But to... You know, just go ahead and, and try to assault the officer. Maybe he wasn't in his right frame of mind because yeah. you you got to be stuck on something to want to go ahead and confront the officer like that. You know, and then you know we we've had have had incidents where it's you know suicide by officer. Maybe sure. could that have been it? I mean, again, we're speculating because we've seen situations like that where, you know, they just do something abruptly to make the officer react, causing them to, to, to right. having their life taken. Right. right. So could it have been that? Was that, you know, you don't know, because you don't know his mindset, right? But something caused him to want to attack the officer. Right. Yep. And he had to have known he had to know that she was going to take some type of action. And right? for those people out there concerned about people's mental health, if he was, you know, had some sort of mental health issue going on, a mental health crisis in that situation, as you can see, that wouldn't have mattered anyway. Even if he did have a mental health crisis going on, that was not a time for that officer to step back and say, hey, are you OK? Is, you know what I mean? That wasn't the time for that officer to do that. He forced mm -hmm. that officer's hand, mental health crisis or not. If you force the officer's hand, that officer has to take action as yeah. if no matter who, what kind of mental health you have going on. And people need to understand that too. 
if he had a mental health crisis and didn't know what he was doing, that's unfortunate, but it doesn't change what that officer needed to do to protect herself. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, people got to understand. That. Yeah. All right, everybody. We thank you for joining us this evening. The brothers-in-law check us out over on Facebook and over on Instagram. Follow us on there. If you uh, would like to stay up to date with us and all our latest videos again, don't forget to please, please, please hit that like, share, and like subscribe and button for us. Boost us up, get us up there with the algorithm that we got to try to still work out and try to get ourselves <laughs> into so we can get up there with some of these big dogs up there putting out the videos and everything. Right. And always remember, remember any altercation you have with the law enforcement, please, please, please just stay calm, comply, mm -hmm. answer questions, listen, and move on. Mm -hmm. So until next week, a blessed weekend, and we'll see y'all next week. See you later. Peace.